Hello everyone, welcome to the Weekly Bump. I am now in Loveland, Colorado, and it's beautiful here. I'm here for the Disclosure Conference, which starts um, in a couple of hours, so I'm gonna be making my way over there shortly. I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes. I'm, I'm excited to meet a lot of people uh, who are on the same page, although I'm still, you know, I'm still a skeptic, always a skeptic at heart, just kind of going and seeing, checking it out, kind of seeing what people say and um, and just kind of being a part of, a part of my own education, I guess, let's <laughs> say that. So here we are. I'm in this beautiful Airbnb. I booked this gigantic house, which was really cheap, like the downstairs part of this house, but the owners are gone. So they're like, yeah, you can just have the whole house to yourself. It's like this 3000 square foot house. So <laughs> it'll be an interesting weekend. Giant house that I won't really have time to enjoy. But anyway, I was driving and realized I forgot my tarot deck. So I was Googling psychic shops. I found one in Denver and I picked up this mythic tarot deck, which is really, really beautiful. Um, but it is a new deck, so I'm not doing reversals and I'm still kind of just feeling it out. So I did pre-shuffle. Oh, just got a couple more on accident. Um, I did, I did pre-shuffle. So I have all of those already set out because I spent like 10 minutes shuffling and waiting for the cards to fall out. So let's go ahead and get started with the cards. I'm not going to do too long of a thing today. Um, just because I'm, I'm on my way out, but the very first card was the Hanged Man that came out. Oh, it is time for us to surrender to the energies at play. There is so much beyond our control at this time. There seems to be two camps of people. We have the people that are mobile and making major changes in their lives. Knight of Cups, Queen of Cups. We have the people that are making changes, quitting their jobs, moving, traveling, doing all sorts of stuff. And then we have the stationary camp, the people who are just standing still. And neither one is good nor bad, but both of them need to recognize and need to understand the essence of surrender because Mars is kind of making its way to the end of its retrograde, it's gonna be ending later this month. Mercury, same thing. We have Venus working her way into a retrograde in October. You know, there's a need for us to just kind of wait and see how everything pans out. If you're making changes in your life, great. You can make the changes, but I really wouldn't recommend pushing Pushing is going to get us into situations that cost us a lot of money or they get us in circumstances that we just were, we might be like, ah, maybe this wasn't the best decision. People that are stationary also need to be careful that they're not, not taking opportunities that come their way as well, because there could be a significant sense of resistance from people afraid of the change, afraid of making major revision right now. So it's, it's important to find this fine balance because for whichever camp you lie in or you're standing in or moving in, <laughs> for whichever camp you're in, things are coming. Page of Cups. Things are going to be presenting themselves in a subtle way. So if you're in the mobile camp, the one that's moving and making changes right now, this could be a little bit over exciting. And if you're in the stationary camp, this could be a little overwhelming. It could be, um, you know, there could be a sense of over enthusiasm or a lack of enthusiasm. So it's important to just take it with a grain of salt, but still move forward. Maybe not so enthusiastically, and maybe also not so skeptically, just remain in a state of neutrality as much as possible. Because you could miss out on something, but this shouldn't be done as a fear of missing out, but rather of just being open, just to see, no expectations. If it works out, great. If it doesn't work out, great, no problem. But the universe is gonna help guide you in a certain way. And what I think it's doing more than anything, rather than guiding you to someplace, it's actually guiding you away 
from some place, as we have the Eight of Cups and the King of Wands. Now, the thing with this deck, actually, that I really love... Um, now, I normally associate the Kings with the fixed qualities and the Queens with the Cardinals. However, this deck is flipped. So this, we have a very Aryan energy, right? We've got the Rams on his throne here. The Queen is very Scorpio, okay? Fixed um, water. So when we consolidate the concept of Aries within us and the Eight of Cups, there is directionality. It's very on the nose, very on point. But the universe wouldn't be giving you this if you weren't needing to get away from something. And for those of you who are in the mobile camp, the ones who are moving all around, it doesn't necessarily mean that the destination is where you're supposed to go, right? It's not, it's not about the destination. It's about the origin. And I feel as though this is going to be very slow, very quiet, and yet a pivotal moment in our lifetime. A, a moment in our life where we'll look back, we will reflect, and we will be grateful for this kind of distraction, whatever this is. You know, this could have been a momentary thing that comes in and comes out. It's very fleeting. A page is not an energy that is uh, so potent. It's not... It doesn't have a lot of stick to itiveness. It's just kind of a milepost to kind of show you where you're going or to help get you back onto the road. There is no need to be fearful, as we see with the King of Wands. You know, there's no need to feel a lot of doubt at this time, right? As we say, the hanged man. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, it is it is important for us to just surrender because a lot of the change that have been made, whether within the last month since the Pluto Sun opposition, Saturn Sun opposition in Cancer in July, or even you know maybe a little bit before that as well. What we're doing is we're waiting for the fallout of all of that stuff. <laughs> we're waiting for the dust to settle so that we can see things more clearly. But right now we are getting the Seven of Cups coming out as well. And the Seven of Cups is hazy. And we could be feeling misdirected. We could be feeling misguided, which is where that sense of doubt comes from. So when this Page of Cups comes in, when this opportunity comes in, it is important for us to think that this is not the end-all be-all, but it's merely just another stepping stone and that's it. A stepping stone away from that which you're needing to get away from. The Seven of Cups is neither good nor bad. Sometimes it just is. Sometimes it's, it's just a state of, you know, we don't need to be affected by this so much because we can stand back and we can just analyze the confusion. We can analyze the up in the air quality that our lives are sort of taking at this moment in time. It's okay that we're not feeling so like we know what we're supposed to do. That's going to come later. That's going to come in a later time. We need to go through this Venus retrograde first in order to really see things being reflected back to us. We need to suss out where we really stand and the true progress of our spirituality. Um, because ultimately it is our, our spirit's desire that guides us. It's important for us to recognize the intelligent design that is at play as well, as we see with the hanged man, that the overall story is very intricate and it is to a level of degree of detail that we couldn't possibly design. And this is a moment in time to reflect back, as many of us have been, I myself included, to reflect back and start putting the pieces of the puzzle together up till now and bringing those kind of seeming ghosts of the past, bringing them into the conscious, into our consciousness so that we can kind of see how it works, so that we can understand the methodology, so that we can accept this kind of 
up in the air quality right now a little bit more easily. The last two cards that came out, this is not a heavy reading. We get one major arcana, right? So it's, it's very subtle. It's very soft. We get two and three of pentacles coming out. Two of pentacles, as we know, there's often an element of choice. Again, which way do I go? What's the right move? I myself am feeling that. You know, I have my tickets booked to go back to Europe in November. I'm like, oh man, like, I don't know if I have the energy for that. Um, like now, maybe it's just a Mars retrograde, so I'm not doing anything. Like as far as I know, it still stands. But, you know, to move around to all these cities, like, I'm getting worn out just thinking about it. But at the same time, I probably wouldn't have booked that or talked about it if I didn't really feel like that's what I was supposed to do, even though I had no idea why I felt I was supposed to do that, you know, kind of thing. So we can be feeling this teeter-totter effect. But the more solid we are in our hearts and the more detached we become, again, you know, detached from life, essentially, the more detached we become, the more fluid we become, which makes life just so much easier. <laughs> and as we have the Three of Pentacles, as we know, this is a card of creativity, it's a card of collaboration, it's a card of working, um, working in a way that is purposeful and meaningful, it is efficient, it is productive, our relationships take on a more solid foundation um, that is more goal-oriented, you know, so if you're in a relationship it's more about the end game, setting that long-term vision or that long-term mission and saying, okay, well, this is where we need to go. So what are the logical steps that we need to take? So it's not necessarily about each other. It's not necessarily about the business itself or the issue or the problem. It's about the solution to the problem. You know, so this is a card. These are two cards actually of solutions and, um, and making efficient but also minuscule steps it's not about eating the whole elephant all at once it's, it's just one thing at a time one day at a time no stress if something works out great if it doesn't great like I said before and yet uh, take advantage of the things that do come your way be open it might not be where you're supposed to go it could just be the pivot point for you to get to where you're supposed to go. I think we should be grateful for this coming out of the Page of Cups and not as like a tower or an Ace of Swords um, because, or even a judgment card, <laughs> you know, because now we have the ability to just change and that's it. And it's not a whole big thing. It doesn't have to, it doesn't always have to be such a big thing. You know, it's not always this breaking point. It can just be like, oh, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go that way now and it's okay and I don't have to justify my life I don't have to justify my actions to anybody I'm just gonna do what what I feel to be right um you know on the I'm not gonna talk too much oh that's the hot tub <laughs> the hot tub just kicked in which I will be enjoying later as I did last night it was amazing um, it's important for us to not well, actually, when I was on my trip up here, I was listening to an audiobook. I just started it, so I didn't get a chance to finish it. But it's like a, I wish, um, it's on my phone. I don't, I don't want to switch my camera off. But it's like Buddhism 101. Because I feel like I'm kind of becoming Buddhist, even like without trying or without any kind of, like I'm going to be a Buddhist and, and do that. I, I just feel like that's kind of naturally where my life is taking me and, and sort of adapting that kind of a lifestyle and, and during my meditations really, you know, thinking about things the way they, they talk about things. It's just kind of a natural alignment that's happening. So I was like, well, let me just educate myself a little bit on what Buddhism even is. And they talk a lot about karma and, uh, and dharma as well. And they refer to dharma as the, you know, the, the exoteric form of knowledge the books that you read, the people that you speak to, the gurus that you align yourself with, the teachers, all that kind of thing. And at a certain point, you know, the Dharma becomes a liability. The education, the truth, the knowledge that you have becomes a liability and actually becomes a means through which you hold yourself back. They describe 
the knowledge or the truth as a, like a raft or a vehicle. But at a certain point, you are going to be asked to get out of that vehicle and continue on by foot because the, the path becomes too narrow. And the danger is, or the liability is, is that those truths become some form of personal dogma that people can get trapped in. And I, I, I think that there's a part of me that's sort of gotten to that point, and I suspect a lot of you have gotten to that point as well. I remember I was talking about uh, a book that I was reading and someone had posted a comment on, on one of these weekly bumps and they said, you know, reading is amazing, reading is great, but at a certain point you need to put the books down and just let the knowledge come. And I kind of did take that with a grain of salt, and I do still feel like there's a lot that I still need to educate myself on. But when you do meditations that are so intense and so collection-oriented, I guess, you know, where, where they are purposeful in just receiving, it is amazing what comes to you and how quickly it does come to you. And I think I, I came to a point recently, um, because my meditations and spirituality are at the forefront of my mind all the time. You know, I have created the life where I'm able to live my spiritual practice all the time, um, which not everyone is so lucky. A lot of people have to check out, go to work, do the relationship stuff. You know, that's actually one benefit of being single is that I don't really have to worry so much about um, someone else and, and I can do my own spiritual practice at my own pace and I don't have to worry about about anyone else and not understanding me or whatever and uh, and I just wanted to point that out that that is a part of spiritual growth um, to put the books down eventually and and just allow yourself to come into truth that no one can give you the understanding that that understanding must be attained by your own right and by your own doing, by living your life in that manner and in that way. It also describes karma. And I'm going to try to convey this concept as much as I understood it because I think I misunderstood karma a lot. And I think it's common for people in the West specifically who are not raised or you know, who were not reared in this religion um, or this association. Karma, you know, as, as I previously understood it, was kind of a what goes around comes around. The things that you do, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, which is true. But when you think of karma, they said, you know, your life is what you are. And at any minute, you, when you, those moments when you change your life are those moments when your karma changes as well. And it is not necessarily about a consolidation of past acts. And that the things you're paying for or the hardships that you have now are not necessarily payments for the past, but they are reactions to what's currently going on intrinsically in your heart and in your mind. And the way you break free from karma, as we all know, this is a simple concept. I think it just uh, it's just misunderstood in in terms of how it's connected with the devil card, in terms of how it's connected with um, even the judgment card and the justice card as well. And, and I think I was a little bit wrong uh, at times when I when I was when I was describing this, you know. And it's about the moment, it's about the now, and even at this very moment, you can break free from karma almost entirely, right? It's just that choice to choose to think about something differently, a choice to see the positive, a choice to act compassionately, to be mindful. It's a choice to have a job, even, <laughs> have a job that is more aligned with your spiritual practice. Um, you know, it does talk about how difficult it is in today's day and age to live a life entirely, especially in the Western world, uh, entirely in spirituality because it's like we have to turn it off in order to function in the world. 
we have to turn it off to go to work and interact with our clients and we have to turn it off uh, even with our families and our significant others sometimes and that just hinders our own progress and if you are with someone or around people that are not interested in learning it does hold you back the importance of our livelihood and the importance of our mindfulness is kind of the things that we we must do to break free from our hardships and of course we will still have hardships but they won't seem that way or they won't appear that way right because we are choosing not to see them that way plain and simple breaking free from the lens of perception <laughs> nothing is good nor bad it just merely is so anyway it's kind of a good good little read I'm sorry I don't have the actual title of the book if I find it I'll try to put it in the description box down below later on in the week if I remember um, just kind of something fun so I'm gonna leave you guys with that I actually got to get ready to go hope you guys like this deck I might use this deck in my monthlies although I know people get so distracted by the artwork and the cards and all that I, I might just stick with the Rider weight. we'll see but I'll be working on monthlies this week I'm going up to Idaho to see my mom so um, it'll be uh, a little bit later in delivery but we'll still get them out so all right you guys thanks so much take care